Last summer when we picked up our first ever RV, we quickly found out that we were late to the party when we went to find a place to keep it for the winter in Florida. So in this video, you'll find out if our panic and desperation paid off for us as we give you a quick tour and our review of the Surf RV Resort. Welcome to OK Let's Go RV. My name is Scott. And I'm Ellen. And we've been full-timing for just about six months, and this is our first long-time stay here at the Surf RV Resort in Palmetto, Florida. So we're going to be leaving in a couple of weeks, and before we did, we wanted to give you a tour of the place and let you know what our experience has been and share it with you to see what your experience might be if you plan to come here. So let's go. <laughs> so we ended up at the Surf pretty much out of uh, panic and desperation. I called about 20 different places and nobody was open, but I did finally get in touch with the Tides, which is about a mile away from here, and it's their sister site. We were able to get one month there, and then they put us on the wait list for the surf, uh, and it hadn't even opened yet. And around September, they gave us a call and let us know that they did have availability for December, uh, January, and February, but they would have to move us between sites. So while we were here, we actually stayed in three sites, um, and in different locations of the park, obviously, three sites, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, so the surf is conveniently located off of Interstate 75. It's about 40 miles south of Tampa yeah. and about 15 miles north of Sarasota. So it's on the Gulf Coast, um, and it's very centrally located to many different things in the area, which we'll get into a little bit further into the video. The surf is owned by Zeman, and they own a number of different resorts around the country, but this is their newest one. It opened up on December 1st, and we were here since then. The um, resort has 449 full hookup sites. They're all either pull-in or back-in. There are no pull-through sites, and it is a 55 or older community. Why do you think it's only 449 sites? I don't know why it's only 449 Did sites. Did they forget to put one in? I don't know, but there's a big grass area way over there that looks like they could have fit another site in. Oh. So I'm not sure why they didn't no, do I that. I don't know. It just seems a little bit it, it does. A little bizarre. Why does it have to be 450? Why do you? Well, well, well uh, do you think they said, let's build a resort with 449 right. sites? It's weird. Yeah, it is weird. So there are two types of site. There's a legacy and the elite. And the legacy sites are generally the ones that are back to back with another rig. The elite sites are around the perimeter where there's nobody behind you or your rig is back up to the lake. So those are very nice sites. All the uh, sites are pavers. There's no dirt, there's grass and crushed seashells around most of them, especially where the utilities are. As far as the number of legacy and elite sites, there are more elite sites, and people generally consider those the higher quality sites because of their placement to the lake. Uh, for us, I think all the sites were pretty good. So a little later on in the video, I'm going to give a walking tour to show you all of the amenities, but I want to take the opportunity now to tell you about the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is uh, provided by the SURF. It's very good. It's strong signal anywhere in the park. I've tested it everywhere, and we used it almost exclusively for all of our streaming and Teams and Zoom calls. It worked out great during the day, at night, and no buffering and things like that. I also have supplementary internet service from T-Mobile, as well as I use Starlink, and I use a Peplink router to bond those together, and I'll put links and more information in the description below if you want to learn more about those. As far as uh, mail delivery, so Amazon does come in and deliver packages. If they can't get them to your site for whatever reason, they'll put them at the front office, and then you can pick up your mail at the front office. They do have mailboxes as well. Um, I haven't used those, so I don't know how those work, but they are available. And then I see FedEx, UPS uh, come in and drive it around, and again, they'll leave the packages at the front if they can't get to your site for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, there you, you go, said. what I said. Right. So the check-in was pretty easy. We did most of the paperwork online, so when we got here, we just pulled our rig into the staging area, and then we went in quick just to really just check in and pick up the key fobs, the Wi-Fi passwords, and things like that, drop off. I think we need to drop off our dog uh, vaccination paperwork, and then you pull right out, go up to the gatehouse, and somebody is there in a golf cart, and they'll escort you right to your site and help you back it in. Uh, that was very convenient. It saved Ellen the hassle of having to go back there and uh, yell at me for doing something wrong. Help. Oh, help, yes. Help. Help. That's right. Help. Yeah. right. help, yes. Left, right, forward, back. <laughs> yeah, okay. No. 
Okay, so like we said, we stayed at three different sites, and that wasn't a problem with the resort having to move us. It's just because we booked so late. Uh, they didn't have contiguous spots until uh, I think January and February were that we didn't have to move. And then uh, our plans changed, so we actually booked an extra month for March, and that's what got us to the third spot. So the first spot was along 41. I'll let Ellen talk about that because she was working and over near 41 is a bit noisy. Then we had another one that was on the, um, the northeast side of the park, which was up against the lake. And that first one, 41, was, uh, that was against 41 was also up against the lake. So that part of it was pretty nice. And then our third one is over towards the back of the resort. And it's a back-to-back -back site, but it has a big, long piece of grass between the back of the rigs, so that's really nice too. Uh, you got enough buffer from your neighbor, um, and it's really quiet back there. So what do you think about that site in the front there? That was a little dicey. So our first site was right near the, it's not really, well, I guess it is a highway, but um, mm -hmm. it's two lanes on either side, and it was very busy. It's busy in the morning and at night, um, and then there's constant traffic as you hear throughout the day uh, but it just always seemed that it was really loud when I'd get on a phone call or when I would be speaking on a phone call or um, trying to do some meetings so but you know we got used to it and you learn that you keep your windows closed you run the AC and you know you just accommodate right. for it. So. so before I get to the walking tour portion of this. If you're getting value from this, we'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe. And if you think anybody else will get value from this, please share the video out to them. All right, so here's the walking tour. I hope you enjoy it. We'll be back when it's done. Thank you. This is the pool house, or the uh, clubhouse rather. A little bar here. What's handy is they um, give out free coffee if you want it. And this is the business section. They've got four workstations with very good internet connectivity, a printer, and then there's a library over here. A fair selection of books. Uh, over here we have a card room. And over here, we have the billiards room. And there is also chest and checker tables over there, as well as the shuffleboard, which is pretty cool. And then they have a general activities room here. Um, not sure what they're doing in there today. I won't interrupt them, but I have seen um, quilting going on there and some other painting and other arts and crafts stuff. Bathrooms, of course. Let me show you into the gym. It's pretty well equipped, all new, of course. And some cubbies over here, put your stuff. And then they also have in here, uh, men and women's uh, locker rooms. Here's another activities room. Yeah, so pretty well equipped. A quick walk around the pool area. So it's not too full today. We have this uh, barbecue section, uh, serving areas, outdoor shower. Hello, how are you? It's a hot tub here. And then over here, a seating area with a gas fire pit. Seating and lounge chairs over here. There's turf, some cornhole boards here. You can kind of hang out here and look over the man-made lake, one of them. It's pretty big. Plenty of wildlife kicking around in here in the mornings. You see birds fishing. We've seen eagles here. Uh, there's an alligator or two hanging around in the park as well. They don't bother anybody as long as you don't bother them. And we have over here is another seating area with fire pit. And this is a little hidden jewel over here that you can get to any time of day from the other side. Nice, shaded, a uh, little quieter than the pool area if you just want to sit there and relax. Live music is something they do quite frequently, particularly on the weekends. Uh, but they'll bring them in during the day too, during the week. Here you go. Thank you. So a few uh, bocce ball courts here. There is some more covered seating. Get out of the heat. And we have some seating and another fire pit here. 
some more cor cornhole, my New England accent, dropping those R's for you. And then, of course, pickleball. Some shaded stands, so for spectators or if you're waiting to play, there are seven courts. So we've got, we have four there, and then another three over here. And then we have this tiki bar. Some really nice tables on the outside of these. Uh, here's the bar. Big old parrot up there. Every month or so, they have a little market that'll come in here in the morning from like a nine to noon, uh, various vendors. And if they have any specialty vendors come in, like here is a mobile uh, hair salon. There's a coffee truck that comes here a couple times a week as well in the morning. And that may be in addition to a food truck that might show up on the other side of the clubhouse. And here we have what's kind of a food court area. You can see that this is cordoned off there and that's because they generally will bring in a food truck. And then over here they have this permanent food truck that's here that surfs up. The food's really good. I ordered something here today. And you can either sit down and eat there or in the pool area. I don't think they have any restrictions for not having food in there, but you can't have, have any glass bottles. Or if it's too warm out, the sun's beating down on you, you can come over and sit under here and uh, kind of hang out over here as well. So there you go. So here's an example, one of the food trucks that comes in. It's around five o'clock, so around dinner time. And today we have pizza cones. So it's typical of what we see here. Almost every night there's something different here. It's pretty cool. Over here we have pretty much mailboxes. Uh, we've not used these, and I'm not sure I know anybody that has, but there seems to be plenty of them here on April 1st. I think there's 211 sites that'll vacate. There's a total of 449 in the park. They are all pull-in or back-in sites. There are no pull-through sites. There are utilities on either side, which makes for, you know, you pull in or back in, and you'll be all set. So we stayed at this site. It's very nice. It's actually a really good site. Uh, we had this corner lot, so we just walked the dog right out there. So as you can see, the sites are really large. These people here put their fifth wheel, it's a sizable fifth wheel, at least 42 feet long, and they've got their tow vehicle in front of it. Some really nice rigs. You can see um, people really take pride in what they own. They keep them very clean, very neat and orderly, which is nice. You know, there's lots of open space, lots of green space in here. Not a lot of dirt, if any at all. All the plantings are new, so they're not really that mature, but they have grown quite a bit since we first arrived in December. Like I said, it's March now. So the palm trees are a little bare, but they'll get there. We were over at the Tides, which is about three years old. We were there in November, and you know it started out basically the same way, same palm trees kind of pruned down that way, and those were uh, fully developed over there now. So next season, season after, it'll just get better in terms of these plantings. So you can see, I've got my truck here. Enough room in front. I've got room to get between it and the fifth wheel here if I have to get back into the utility area. I have our other vehicle there. And then there's plenty of room. We've got a table out here, some lounge chairs, our grill. Here's essentially our backyard. And a lot of people here have dogs and they let their dogs go out here. Everybody's been very good about cleaning up after their dogs. Uh, as I may have pointed out, or if I haven't, there are those dog potty stations almost at every corner with plenty of bags. So if you forget your bags, they're, you, they're within a few steps away for you. So there's really no excuse not to clean up after your dog. This is one of two laundry and bathhouse facilities. This one is at the southeast end of the park and the other one is at the northwest end. This one's a little different in that it has a clothesline area. Let me go in there and show you. There you go. Oh, wow, it's pretty loaded up right now. And brace yourself, this is really exciting in here. 
there are seven sets of washers and dryers here and seven sets in the other place. We've got a folding table, a little wash tub, and through here are the showers and the facilities. This is the men's side, the women's side on the opposite side there. So there's a couple of ways you can run the machines. They're not coin operated at the machine. You can use either an app or a card. Um, a lot of people swear by the app and a lot of people swear at the app. Um, I used it myself and I didn't have any issue with it. Oh, what's nice about this one too is that it's adjacent to the dog park. So maybe take care of a couple of different things while you're over here. Let your dog play, throw your laundry in. There you go. The dog park has two separate areas, one for larger dogs called Mighty Tails. And then over here we have Tiny Tails. And of course we have the potty stations, bags. And the other cool thing is they do have this dog wash station and they provide shampoo and it's hot and cold water running there. And then there is a water fountain for the pups. Yeah, so. I guess that's about it for this section of the review. It gives you kind of a good feel about what the place is all about. So there you go. All right, Ellen's gonna tell you all about the surrounding area and all the fun things that she likes to do around here. <laughs> okay. Do you want me to say nothing at all? No. Okay, just shut up, okay. So earlier I told you where uh, the resort is actually located so just to give you some idea of what is actually in the area uh, surrounding Palmetto Florida if you've never heard of it um, there's many beaches that are nearby it is on the Gulf Coast like I said so Longboat Key um, Siesta Key Anna Maria Island is nearby also uh, St. Petersburg and Clearwater are very close by all probably 30 to 45 minutes away and also, I believe Fort Myers is about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to the south, as well as Naples is a couple hours to the south. So if you're interested in any of those areas, again, it's right off 75. So uh, my understanding is that goes the whole length of the state. So you just yeah. hop on it and off you go. Right. Um, so there's plenty to do in the area as well. So a lot of people that we know go fishing, they've been kayaking, windsurfing. Um, just today we saw people horseback riding in the water um, which not sure the horses were really enjoying <laughs> that but uh, they were doing it um, you know there's lots of echo tours where you can go out and see the manatees um, you can rent boats you can go out on the ocean and rental boats you can zip around the base um, on um, jet skis and things like that as well um, Bush Gardens is also close by and also in the area there's lots of stores, lots of retail establishments, there's malls, all your typical stores are around. They have the Walmarts, the Targets, the Kohl's, the Home Depot, Lowe's, um, all different malls. There's also lots of grocery stores, there's major chains like Publix and Winn-Dixie. There's also a really cool store nearby called Dittweiler's. Um, it's a local farm stand where you can get so much fresh produce and meats and seafood. And there's a great bakery there where you'll find things that you didn't even know that you needed when you're walking out the door. So to top it all off, after you check out, you can get ice cream. So yeah, on your way out the door. That's very convenient. Yeah. Oh, yes, very convenient. Um, and just so you know, uh, I personally had to travel a few times out of here, uh, both for work and personal reasons. So there are three major airports nearby. There's Tampa, of course, Sarasota, as well as Clearwater, um, St. Petersburg as well. So all the major airlines do fly out of there. So we'd like to give you our overall thoughts on the resort, uh, both positive and negatives. Um, some of them are our opinions and our thoughts, and some of them are some things that we've heard from other people that are our friends or people that we've spoken to here. So um, on the positive side, I would say, you know, the, the resort is new, so everything is clean and new, and as you would expect, however, they are constantly walking around maintaining that newness for yeah. you. So 
if you were to use the, one of the bathrooms near the pool or something like that, it's always spotless. Uh, the laundry rooms are kept clean. The bathhouses are also kept clean. Um, someone is always walking around um, picking up things. Um, they pick up trash every day right at your, um, your, re your site. Your site. I was going to say your parking spot. Um, <laughs> so uh, you don't have to take your trash to the dumpster. Um, and you know everyone is very friendly when they're when they're doing that so yeah. it's not like they're doing it begrudgingly so um, that's a good thing yeah the staff is really um, really pleasant they're very accommodating uh, very friendly and you see them you can't walk around here and not see somebody go by on a golf cart um, and they'll wave to you and you can just wave them down if you need something as a matter of fact when we first got here and we were pulling into our first site we noticed that there was some damage that was done to the cap on the um, the sore pipe uh, it wasn't even five minutes I told somebody and they were back and they were fixing that up so you get that level of service um, the front desk I've spoken to the ladies that work up there they're fantastic the thing that's really cool is that if you bring something to their attention, they immediately take care of it. So another positive, there's lots of activities that are coordinated through the events coordinator here. They're either obviously on site or e even off site. They'll schedule tours to go to museums and uh, those types of things. But here there's live music, typically on Friday nights, I guess. It Fridays seems like Saturdays or Saturdays. Um, they have meet and greets from time to time, and then they have they'll do, they look for anything to have a party. Um, so there was a Mardi Gras parade. We had a parade for uh, St. Patrick's Day just a couple of days ago. Uh, there was a dog parade as well, which was pretty cool. I got the video up here. You can go watch that. Um, and what else did they do that was Holiday cool? Holiday party. Oh, they, they had the New oh, Year's Eve party. Yeah, the New Year's Eve party was really good. We uh, we were traveling, but we rushed back to get to that, and I'm glad we did because that was a blast. Yeah. And they also have an app that you can put on your phone. I think there's an app for yeah. everything under the sun these days. Yeah. But they do have a, an app for the surf where it will list all the different activities that are happening that day. So. Um, and in the food also, trucks too, right? right it puts the food right. trucks in it there. It puts the food trucks. There's food trucks every day. I'm not it's, sure very why, yeah. it's very important. It's very important. So you can download that app onto your phone and you can see the whole week in advance. So um, it's very updated and it's very useful. So. Yeah, so between that and the Facebook page, they have a guest Facebook page. Anything that's going on in the park, um, they had power outage um, and that was well communicated. Um, you know, the people who lost power knew it right away, obviously, but the rest of the park. Uh, keep up to date on this app all the time for anything that's out there. And like you said, it's very dog friendly as well. And the other guests here are, I, I don't think we've met anyone who is grumpy or nasty. No, or, no. Um, Everybody waves to you. Everybody right. says hi. Um, you know, people are always willing to help out um, if you need a ride or something or information, referrals for anything. So everyone's always willing to you know be very friendly all right now we get into the negatives well you know and I'll, I'll, I'll lead off by saying that there's no show stoppers here for me I look at the place to see how it's run it's kind of a hobby I look at uh, how places handle customer service and it's clear to me that Zeman has instilled in their employees that customer service and the guest experience is paramount to their success. So with that being said, the negatives from my perspective are very, very minor. Yeah, and you know, I would lead off with probably the noise that we encountered in that first uh, location that we were at, but you know, we, we, we chose that spot. So right. But they can't it, really do anything about that either, no. right? Uh, the only other thing that I noticed right away is when we were coming in in the entrance gate, oh, yeah. um, the way it was built is they have a big building where I guess security or the employees stay. Um, and then they have a keypad. So you put in your number in the keypad and then there's a big building and around that big building, is the gate that will go <laughs> up and down so you can't see that gate 
because the building's in the way. It's that there's there's two lanes, one for the rigs to come through and one for the visitors, kind of a yeah. bypass lane. Yeah. The box over there is not operable for whatever reason. It was either a defective or design flaw. So they're working on that. They know about that. The thing that we hear a lot about is the pool area. So there is one pool here uh, for all the sites, which 449 sites. Um, which would work out to potentially 998 people. Really? 450 would be 900. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I don't even know my math. It was 840, 898. Sorry. Wow. Wow, that's better math than you. <laughs> um, so wow. the pool had, um, you know, it has chairs, but as you can imagine, people will get up early, they'll save chairs, they'll put towels down. Uh, we, we did notice, I think I noticed a couple of weeks ago, people would put their towels down and because it got really hot, they'd just spend the whole day in the pool. So those chairs were just looking like they were occupied. So they ended up recently adding more chairs. The other negative that we've heard from people is that there is no liquor license. Um, apparently that's in the works, they just don't have it yet. But uh, there's not much to complain about because you can bring your own liquor as long as you don't bring glass bottles into the pool area you can bring your own plus when they have an event out there they're giving free beer and wine for the time being so um, although that's maybe a negative um, I don't drink so it's not negative for me but I don't think anybody is suffering from it no I haven't really mm -hmm. seen any suffering going on from yeah that, so I think people have the they're having a good time either good with time. or without the liquor license that's for sure right and you don't have to pay for it right right so, so i don't know why you don't have to bring money to the pool right <laughs> so i don't know maybe yeah. um oh uh the other thing is this is not a campground a lot of people expect that or mentioned or pointed out that there are no picnic tables um and the resort management is quick to point out well it's not a campground it's a resort so um, and, and, you know, a lot of people bring their own stuff anyhow, tables and chairs <coughs> and things like that. So I think, uh, you know, based on all these Class A's that are in here mm -hmm. and these big Super C's that have all, you know, they usually bring a whole lot of stuff. I mean, I think maybe a picnic table will get in the way for some people. Right, and it would take up some of the space. Put things into perspective about the picnic tables. So in a resort like this, you would not be putting in a low-end picnic table you'd be putting in a picnic table that would probably cost somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars and if you figure out there's four hundred and forty nine sites at a thousand dollars each that's a half a million dollars in picnic tables if they don't think that everybody's going to use them it's really a substantial investment for not a lot of return potentially that's how much a picnic table costs a, a good quality of picnic table absolutely you wouldn't get a wooden uh, one yeah yeah. Right. Yeah. Again. You 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 get one that can withstand the weather, the heat, and 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 the beat down the sun. So you get some UV protected one. Just oh, you get an aluminum one. So you sit down. And yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. Oh my God. <laughs> so overall, we've been very pleased with our stay here at the Surf. Uh, we do have reservations for next year uh, to return in December. Right, December. Yeah, December. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, and many of the people that we have met here are also doing the same. So, um, yeah. So. Right. So we didn't talk about costs, and some people are not coming back next year because they think the cost is too high. This is a luxury resort with luxury amenities, so you can expect to pay over one hundred dollars a night. I think right now the top end site for next year is with tax and everything is somewhere. It, $3,800 or something like that but it's best to check with them to see what the rates are because they do change and of course off-season rates will probably be lower $3,800 a month yeah oh okay so we hope you enjoy this video if you did please share it uh, like and subscribe oh, yeah. and check out the links below right there's a lot of information down there that could help you out and there's some links that um, may be affiliate links that we get a small commission on if you happen to um, click on them if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those for us as well, and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. All right, cool, because, you know, Ellen works, and I don't. Right, so <laughs> thank you for watching, and we hope oh. to see you in the future. I wanted to tell you now about the Wi-Fi. It's very good. It's very strong. Uh, we used it um, almost daily for... Work. Work. Yeah, I don't know work. how to say work. work.